Bloodbath continues in Eboni as Fulani herdsmen kill 25 villagers. Suspected Fulani herdsmen have attacked Eboni state on the back of the communal clashes between communities. They struck in the Egedegede area of Ishilu, local government area, killing at least 25 people. Sahara reporters learned from residents that the attackers came in on Monday night to carry out the mass killings which the police and the state government have respectively failed to curtail. It was gathered that many residents had fled the area but the Fulani herdsmen continued to terrorize people on the farms and in isolated places. Our village was attacked again and about five motorcycles were set on fire by the Fulani people. They destroyed farmlands and killed more than 25 people. They are mourning loved ones. The community is in crisis. We need help. A resident reached out. Egedegede is close to Enugu state boundary community communities of communities yeah but the herdsmen continue to lay siege on the area sources at the emboy state police command confirmed the killings adding that oppressives had been deployed well after the attack you see this is the thing operatives are all, always deployed or the actions taken by the government to sort of address these issues is always after the attack why is it that on demand why is it that you know the you know if for example let's say does a thing why can't they call it a, like an emergency helpline 999 or like 911 as popularly known why is it that you know we don't have that and if we do that why can we guarantee yes can we guarantee that you know they'd be on time or they'd even respond sad uh, apart from ishelu ohaku lg has also been on fire suffering from bloody community clashes on saturday unidentified gunmen attacked um, a village in Ohaku. They invaded the village in the early hours of the day, killing 15 people and, you know, burning over 200 houses. The attacks have been recurrent in recent weeks. And yeah, so I think these things are getting very consistent and yeah, so it's sad. Um, I think that obviously the ESN sort of has to... I mean, that's the only option, to be honest. I'm not necessarily thinking, what can we do? How can we prompt the government to sort of, you know, be be effective and all that? To be honest, I'm just like, call on the ESN, to be honest. And they are new. They can't just be ever at the same time. They are still very... They're still growing and all that. So, yeah. I mean, I think that it's, it's a state of emergency. I believe that us not reacting... 25 people is actually a lot. I mean, if some... If one person dies, let's say... In the UK, there'd be a whole, there'd be, in the, and also the way the person died, obviously. But like, if there's one person that died, like in the UK or somewhere else, there'd literally be a whole protest. So yeah, I think as much as we say that, you know, there's no value of life from the government, and it sort of seems uh, in some cases that the value of life, even amongst the people, is not as much. But then again, we are also everyone is also dealing with their own problems, and it's so bad because. As we're trying to protect ourselves and be selfish, it's a detriment to our neighbors and all that. So again, there's a point where you cannot actually be, be too selfish. But what I think is that there needs to be a whole riot. We need to shake up the government. We need to let them know who is in charge because it's definitely not them, um, in my opinion. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I just think that, you know, we need to, the riots needs to happen. The anger needs to be vented out at the um, government. I believe that it's, I think it's a cycle. I think in Nigeria, it just gets too late before we react. And I think it doesn't make sense. I think when these things are happening in their numbers, 25, da, 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 we don't react. But then when it's like 300, 400, 500, 1,000, we react. And I think that is absolutely bad. And it shows how even amongst ourselves as a community, the value of life has just deteriorated where we get desensitized to certain 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 criminalities or atrocities early on and until when it is so much so bad that it gets our attention it's normally too late and it's the same thing with the answers protest i am very happy that the answers protest did happen but i think that right now the government is comfortable they just think that you know what well, this is a once in a blue moon kind of thing and they're not consistent with it and i feel that well, i think that you know they've gotten too comfortable until we go out and protest i don't think anything else will change and it just is what it is so yeah 
Okay, so the first reaction here says Dave Umahi has sold a boy state to the Fulanese for political gain. He has been working against ES and IPOB. Now his blood bank is overflowing. Let him continue. But soon, all these so called Southeast leaders who are, who are working against their people because of politics by these monsters, then they will come to reality of what we're crying for. Just imagine the massacre in Biafra land. And I think that, you know what? I think if anything, the Igbo should not even take this. Like, I think the Igbo should just give it to them, like give it to the government one hand, because <laughs> I think even if, if there's any region where this, to an extent, has been controlled in terms of the killings and all that, I think it's in the in the southeast. Even though it was a bit consistent for a time, but yeah, I feel like what personal opinion is that I want to embolden <laughs> the Igbo people wherever you are. Just give it to the government, like show them that. They cannot mess with you because honestly, yeah, I think that you have to shake this government and what they understand. A lot of time is basically unexpected, you know, aggression towards them. And I think that something might happen. It might not happen. But just to shake them up and know that we are here. You can't just, you know, ignore us or anything because you have to. And uh, someone here says something drastic should be done or more kings perpetrated. Would More kings would be perpetrated by these criminals. This Time, the time to unite against these criminals who think they own a monopoly or violence cannot be better emphasized. It goes standard to the call. True. Um, someone here says, until when our traditional rulers become active leaders in their respective locality, until when our politicians stop using conflicts to get into leaders' positions, we can have absolute peaceful coexistence amongst our people. Well, I think that the fact is we need to know where everyone's mind is at. Okay, not say everyone. Okay, everyone's mind is obviously, I mean, the sane ones. <laughs> Their minds are probably at, you know, no war, peaceful, all that. But then it's the government, it's the people in power that represent these people. So it's like, there's, I don't think there's any point thinking of peaceful coexistence when it is very, very clear from the government that they do not want to act. I mean, Buhari has left the country. <laughs> oh, gosh. Buhari has actually left the country or is planning to leave. And it is very, very obvious with the history. I'm not just assuming things. It is very obvious that the northern leaders do not care. And there was actually an agenda to technically just take over the country. Because, again, from history, the Fulanis were taken over, you know, well, taken over present-day Nigeria. And they sort of stopped at the Middle Belt kind of area. And, um, yeah. So, obviously, with the invasion or the, well, colonialism and all that, that kind of stopped there. And, of course, at that time, you know, Loluga just came. I was like, hell no. Just came and literally just took over from the Sokoto Caliphate and all that. So, yeah. It's very obvious that with their trend and before our history was interrupted, the plan technically was to take over West Africa. It's very obvious. I mean, if you see the way Fulanese are spread across and the way in which they spread across to, you know, it is very obvious through the wars, through the, what's the word? Crusades, yes. The, you know, um, what do you call it again? The religious crusades, you know, where, you know, you take over or try to convert people or try to spread your religion by basically just conquering and killing a lot of people. Um, so it's very obvious that, you know, that's sort of the main, main sort of, what's the word? The main sort of angle they're coming at, the northern leaders. It's very obvious in their actions, in their lack of proactiveness and all that. I mean, if they're able to go to other places and, you know, take over, try to, you know, force people to join their religion or whatever. I mean, would you be surprised that they did not even react to their own people dying or anything i mean they we should do oh, it's so sad it's so sad they're greedy people in this world and unfortunately under the umbrella of islam everything is obviously getting mixed up but yeah i feel like if that's the aim then the southerners basically Igbos and yorubas cannot come with the gentility to face people that want to take took over them doesn't make sense that's what i think um put what you think about this in the comment section below and do not forget to like and also subscribe